Welcome, guys, to this version of Aths TV. Today, we've got uh, joining us Richard Huggins, uh, Jeff Risley, and James Hansen. And uh, the purpose for this is really just to look at sort of how the altering coach and athlete dynamic can sort of change over an athlete's career, um, and and looking at sort of some of the things that influence us uh, within that dynamic, and um, and how we can make the most of it, and and I guess share some ideas with current coach and athlete partnerships to what they might need to consider to have such a such a positive and healthy coach athlete relationship so first of all i think james you know a lot of this was spurred from from the conversation yourself and rory hunter had with the um, interviewees after the australian mile champs in 2019 in bankstown and really looked at uh, how you sort of work with a guy like richard huggins at at the moment and um and work within a dynamic that sort of has people like jeff risley um directing some of the training and and the partnerships with other uh, training partners and things like that. Can you give us a bit of an idea and, and maybe a description as to what the dynamic is like uh, amongst the three of you directly? Yeah, so it's a different dynamic from most groups, but it just kind of, I guess for me, it came out of a place of, I felt in myself that I needed a little bit more control over my program. And I think for me, that gave me a little bit more belief in myself and what I was doing. Um, it was a very, very internal thing for me. Um, but how it works is basically, I guess I direct a lot of my day-to-day -day stuff in terms of my runs and everything. Um, Jeff has a big control over the, the program. So Jeff, I basically work within the group and work within the group boundaries so that like, the program's already written up mostly and I'll basically just follow the group, the group program. So I'm there for every session. Um, and we basically all work together as a group when we're there, we're all together um, on the track. And then Richo's, Richo's um, oversees a lot of the sessions and comes in and also gives advice on the programming and different things that we should do day to day. But it's very, um, self-driven and then it's like we're always kind of I guess it's this back and forth thing like a lot of sessions and that because how complicated athletes are and how they need different things in different sessions we'll almost like talk about that on the spot so there might be changes that need to be made during sessions um, a lot of that I've actually got guidance for from Jeff during the session on how we should adapt that or just before and different things like that but yeah it's a very um I'd probably say quite intuitive kind of model. So it's very, yeah, very self-driven, but also a lot of structure because I think a big thing that we, all of us have found is there's certain um, ingredients that a good distance runner needs and there's certain boundaries that you obviously need to put in. But um, for me, in terms of that dynamic, I, I really enjoy that own ownership, taking the ownership over certain things I do during the week but then coming into that group and having that that group and having that you know having Richo there as a, as that support and knowing that some of the biggest things for that is when I'm overseas and it's like me and Richo will talk and Richo will be able to calm me down and keep me relaxed and keep my mind focused and give me that belief and then yeah just putting it all together it's definitely not something that's really simple to explain but I guess that's kind of how it works if it makes sense yeah no perfect and and then jeff going over to yourself um obviously you, you play a slightly different role in the in the group than just an athlete and 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 i guess there's sort of that that change in what some of the traditional coaching models sort of impact how, how does it sort of work for yourself in this um in this group well 80 percent of the year it's pretty easy because we're all doing the same training um so it's only really i guess as we're getting towards races and you know, Zach might head a bit more towards a 5K and, you know, Hanson was, you know, getting ready for 5K nationals this year and I'm obviously going towards the eight. So um, might be just track sessions that we manipulate a little bit to sort of suit each other's needs. And um, Hanson's obviously um, recognised that he needs a bit more speed. So he, obviously, he comes and I kind of help him out on that because that's obviously my strength. And then, you know, the fight legs and the thresholds, you know, they're a lot better at, than that at me. So they sort of take over that. But yeah, ultimately, I guess I write the program. Um, and 
Well, yeah, I guess I do write the program, but I lean on these guys a lot because, you know, they, they've been around a long time. They know what works for them. Um, and I guess it's more, I guess I'm more the high performance manager and I manipulate the different little pieces and keep them motivated and just keep them sort of on the right track. And, and I guess, you know, for me and, and running, it's, it's a lot about visualization and sort of knowing where you're going. So I sort of, I guess, draw up that little picture and, and keep them motivated and, and keep us moving forward and thinking about training camps and, and competitions. And, and I guess that's sort of a bit of my strength having, you know, spent every single year in Europe. Um, yeah. So, you know, we lean on each other. Um, Cobb's probably, you know, one of the most mentally tough athletes that I've ever met. So, you know, when I'm sort of struggling and need a little bit of help, you know, I'll go to him and, um, you know, Zach's another guy who's been through a lot of injuries and, you know, he's sort of had to find his way through and, you know, sometimes I'll go to him for advice and, um, you know, we got Richo that oversees everything and um, he's always at the track calling splits and it's just good to know, yeah, that we've got someone that we can count on and um, we've also got Andrew Russell in the background who, you know, is probably the highest paid high performance manager in Australia and, you know, he's someone that I can call on the phone if I think I need a little bit more help. So, yeah, we sort of bring it together and kind of make it work. But, yeah, there's a lot of people in there. And, um, yeah, I'm pretty lucky I've got three athletes that are really self-driven and they know what they're doing. I don't need to sort of check in on them too much. And we're all set up on training peaks. So I see all their runs, all their data, all their heart rate stuff. And, um, you know, that provides extra context for me for, for creating the program. But, um, yeah, I guess we just bring different pieces together and use different strengths and, and we kind of make it work and we're pretty good at communicating and knowing each other's and we've been working with each other for a long time so um and we're all good friends and I think one thing that we've kind of realized is if we want to run really well we need all four of us running um together yeah. and and pushing each other and it really is a strength in numbers which you know unfortunately we just haven't quite been quite able to achieve you know like I've had my injuries and when Hanson's been going really well and um, you know, Tom's been going well at different parts and Zach sort of, you know, came third at um, State Cross and he was, you know, looking like he's on the up and we just sort of haven't really been able to put it together. But yeah, I guess ultimately I kind of manage the programs and the training loads and, and all that sort of stuff. But, um, you know, yeah, it's good. And it's a bit of a challenge for me because I still need to be the athlete. Um, so that's probably the biggest challenge I find is just I invest a lot of my emotional energy into these guys and I love it. Um, but I still need to kind of look after myself. But, you know, I get a lot of joy from helping these guys and, and that helps me. So, it, yeah, we kind of make it work. Yeah, no, excellent. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, and, and I guess, Rich, uh, leading to yourself here, um, you know, this is a, it's a very sort of progressive nature of, of the, the group that you're currently involved in and the role that you play. Talk to us about how, how things have sort of changed for you as a coach um, in the past where you're sort of probably entering in and, and, and probably more so around the time where you had uh, guys like Jeff and Geordie training together in the early stages of their career to, to how you've sort of uh, probably stepped back your, your key involvement and, and sort of just been more supportive of the group currently. What, what, what's sort of been the key differences uh, between uh, how you were coaching then to sort of what your role is now and in, in supporting these guys? Well, as I was saying, I was writing programs back then. Jeff writes programs now. Um, I oversee the guys, basically. Uh, I'm there for advice. Uh, I had, I'd call myself an advisor these days more than a, um, a coach. Um, I, I think I'm very good when they're on the line. I can get them to relax and focus. Um, and I've done that uh, with all the athletes, um, you know, throughout their, um, their careers. Um, if I see a bit of tension or I see a bit of tightness in them when they're um, doing their warm up before they race, I can relax them. Um, I've just got, that's probably one of my, my um, abilities. Um, but yeah, the, the training has changed a lot. Uh, you'd expect it to. Um, as you know yourself, Adam, with your, with the way that you training, you said to me the other day, you, you deliberately change your training, often not every week, of course, but over a period of time because it freshens the athlete, which I believe it does. Um, and uh, I had that same idea and still do actually. Um, so yeah, that's that's 
bit of a roundup of it. Yeah, yeah I think I can probably speak to, um, yeah, Richo's involvement and, and how drastically it has changed. I think I started, yeah, down when I was 17, I got introduced to athletics at my school um, through James McEnara, who was a state 800 metre champion. Um, and I went down there and um, didn't know anything about it. And, and Richo just created this really fun environment where, you know, it was really enjoyable to turn up and train and met some great people. And um, like he said, that environment and people training together kind of just all spurred us on. And we had, were lucky to have quite a few good athletes that kept pushing each other on. And I guess I kind of got to that point, um, you know, when I think I ran 146 um, at the Melbourne A Series back in the day. And um, I guess that's sort of when I started working with Nick's group, but um, always sort of kept that relationship with Richo and I sort of didn't travel as much as Nick's guy. So um, I leaned on Richo and always came down to paddocks and, you know, there was all, I knew there was always going to be guys like Jordy Williams. And I guess a couple of those young people got exposed. You know, I learned a lot from Nick and I think that kind of funneled down to a lot of the guys that I used to train with down at Knox, um, you know, and, and through that whole period, Richo was always someone there who I could confide in, you know, when things weren't going well or when I was stressed out. And I guess when I left Nick for Andrew, um, Andrew was really quite time poor, obviously being the high performance manager at Hawthorne. And I guess Richo um, sort of had a bit of a role, more of a coaching role with Andrew um, in terms of, you know, they talk and, and Andrew couldn't get to a lot of sessions. So Richo kind of would step in as coach and, um, you know, Richo always um, through those years travelled with us overseas. So he was always there looking after us and watching us and um, coming to all our races, which is, um, you know, I guess timed out pretty well with around the same time Richo was sort of retiring and, um, you know, and, and now he sort of has that same role with us in the group. So, you know, I've been working with Richo for, you know, nearly 15 years and he's uh, probably a bit more of my, you know, like my second grandpa rather than... Um, coach and I guess that's sort of how our relationship has changed and the different roles that he's had you know throughout my career but um, I think ultimately throughout that whole thing you know we had this really good friendship and this respect of each other and he was just always someone there that I knew I could lean on and um, you know even though I changed coaches and had different coaches along the way he never got his you know he never got annoyed or frustrated or you know he never let his ego get in the way he always supported me and he always wanted the best for me and um, you know, I think that's why we're still here working together and, um, you know, going to be friends for a long time. Yeah, and, uh, and James, I'll throw one to you now. Um, you know, I mean, Jeff's just sort of talking about the type of guy Richard is in, in trying to help people out. I mean, you're sitting in the house out the back of his house at the moment. How do you sort of make the most of the opportunities that you've got at the moment, working with, um, working with people like Jeff, um, seeing the experience that I've got and then someone like Richard with his experience and then bringing your own. How do you make the most of that yourself? I think what's really been touched on in this call is that, first of all, I see both of these people as two important people in my life, not because of running, but because I love Jeff as a friend and I see Richo as almost like a second dad to me. And um, that's that's what I in our training group, and this is something. This is like, I mean, I've been trying to really learn from Richo because I've started getting in my, into my own coaching and stuff just recently, and go like, what is it about Richo that separates him? If you look at him as a junior coach and the results he had and the people that he had come through, it's phenomenal. But you, when you know like the person that Richo is, and you know him, Adam, like someone with absolutely no ego he's someone that wants the absolute best for their athletes um and he knows how and he knows definitely what training to do but most of all as a person creates this environment where it's like it makes us almost like a, we feel secure we feel like we're a family and it's like it doesn't matter what happens we're all together and we're all enjoying what we're doing um and yeah like when I met Jeff, um, like I just learned as much as I could from him because I was a, like, I'm very, very, me and Jeff are a complete polar opposites. But um, like, I just, Jeff is such a high performer and such, like, does things in such a, a way that's such a high level. I've never seen someone be able to do stuff like that. So it's just, I always know 
you know, that that's, that's the example. I know what he does is at a high level and I always just, I fit, you know, I feed off that and learn from that, but do it in a way that works for me as an athlete, because for me, that's different in how it's actually comes out, but it's knowing that that is the right way to do it. The way he does it is the right way to do it, but I need to do it in a way that works for me. Yeah. And yeah, basically, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, and and, I, and I, it sort of touches on something that uh, Jeffy and I have spoken about a few times, and I'm, and I'm interested in a moment to get Richard's thoughts on how he sort of as a coach has sort of instilled this in people over, over his career. But Jeff, we talked about uh, previously coaches sort of go through the period of, of learning and developing their craft as a coach. And it's sort of something you're going through a little bit in your own way at the moment. But we talked a lot about the coach has a role and the athlete has a role and the athlete needs to learn how to be an athlete. And I'm hearing that from both of you guys at the moment where there's certain things that you identify as what's right for you. How do you sort of develop that confidence and belief in how you go about doing that, knowing what works for you? And what are some of the things that have influenced that, Jeff? Um, yeah, I guess probably the biggest influence was um, Nick Badeau. Um, you know, he sort of took me overseas and, um, yeah, just, I guess, showed me, yeah, how the circuit worked and the level, you know, even Maury Plant, the level of hardness that you had to bring to the sport. Um, it's, um, yeah, especially distance running, it's just, it's just ruthless. So, you know, I remember being in London, just watching Craig and I'm a bit like James. I just went there as a pretty green, um, never traveled, never had a passport. And I just sat there and I watched and I learned. And um, yeah, so he was like, obviously a massive influence on the sort of start of my career. And, um, you know, and then I sort of went and, and across to Jack and he had sort of a different way. And um, I probably had a little bit more ownership over training um, and a little bit more involvement. And um, I guess using training peaks and a few little bit of, bit of different technology and things, I sort of, I learned a little bit more. Um, yeah. And ultimately between those two guys, I sort of, I guess I've meshed what I think worked well for me from both of them. And um, I kind of make that work now. And, and every athlete's different, you know, like James just touched on it. We lived together for a year and um, <laughs> probably safe to agree. We got a bit, I got a bit frustrated. I definitely got a bit frustrated with him because he didn't, um, approach running the same way I did and that got annoying for me and I think I've done a full 360 and I've kind of learned that there's not one way to do it and every athlete is different um, and um, I guess in the last few years I've probably learned as much from James as what probably he did from me from those early years that you know I probably also went the opposite way where I was too highly strung and I needed to relax a bit more and, and like I said before he's sort of one of the you know the most mentally tough athletes I've seen so um, you know, he's always sharing podcasts with me and we're, we're all both sharing podcasts and we're always learning. And, um, yeah, I think that's, you know, it's, it's a matter of, yeah, trial and error and getting out there and doing it and reading and speaking to people and I guess doing things like this and, um, yeah, just kind of putting it, putting it into the program. But, um, yeah, so I, I don't, I don't know if we're doing it the right way, but, um, yeah, we're working together and getting results and, um, yeah, I guess just feeding off each other. And, and Rich, just going, going to yourself, I mean, a lot of times with some of these guys, you've had them in their real junior early days and, and, and they've sort of had to um, go out and get their experiences to sort of grow as athletes. What, what have you sort of, what would you suggest that you would have done as a, as a coach to be able to put some sort of level of culture in there to the openness to this learning? Um, well, I think sort of a tricky question, that one. Um, but... Uh, I think the group, again, I keep going back to the group, the training group that we've had over the years. Uh, I think they built trust of each other um, and uh, uh, they were friends, but they'd com definitely competing against each other. I think um, a lot of it sort of would come out of that. Um, I think I'm a person that's, always positive and I try to give positive points over negative points. I mean, it, it's the easiest thing in the world to pick something negative. It really is. It's, but when you've got an athlete that's absolutely had a crap run, for example, um, and these boys, some of the, the boy, the, you know, Jeff and James, Zach, they've all had their crap runs. They've had some ripper runs, but they've had some crap runs. But to pick out the good points 
of um, what they actually did and put them in front of the bad points. Um, all right, you can direct, you've got to direct bad points to the athlete, things that they've done, you know, where they've failed in the race, where they haven't, um, uh, you know, they might have started poorly um, uh, or they've, um, they've ran out of steam, you know, with 120, 130 gun, no legs. You know, there's ways of, of trying to work that race where you can, you can modify that and improve on that. And that's the job that I, I've, you know, that I've carried through right from when I first started coaching. Um, and I started coaching with little ass. So, um, it, again, it's giving an athlete belief and just working, hammering, 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 hammering that belief um, through their, you know, through their athletic careers. But being positive no. is, yeah, is one of the most important things. And I think that probably what lends to athletes being a little bit more open to learning because they're not scared of the feedback. They're probably looking for it and hoping to get it. And it, and it gives them the opportunity to learn as they go forward with the experiences they have. Um, just just a, a, a quick question here, just to finalise things for us. If you sort of, uh, sort of looking back at your, um, at the dynamic that all three of you have had at certain times in your career and those sorts of things, what are some of the key things that you think uh, athletes and coaches should consider to, to, to maintain a really good, healthy coach-athlete relationship? And as, a, as an athlete, what, what are you hoping for from your coach in this situation? I'll start with James. So I just think what I've learned over the last couple of years is it's you need to protect your own mind and the training that you believe in is probably going to work for you and you need to keep there needs to be um, like for me running it's a very internal thing it's like if you're happy in yourself happy in what you're doing you're such a simple sport every day you've just got to get that little bit better and if you can do that and get that little bit better and stay committed to the process and you know obviously get advice from the like my thing's always been get around the people that are getting the results and learn from them and you'll go there but most of all protect yourself protect what what you believe in and have good people around you have people that you can trust be vulnerable um be open to to, to stuff and to different things and i think you know, like we, our group could have probably, when I first made my decision to want to do a bit more self-direction, a lot of people would have just told me to go away and not even to join the group. These guys were open enough to go, no, we trust this guy and we're going to let him have a go at what he wants to do. And because of that, it's allowed me to um, really progress in my own running. But also I think we've all progressed from that. We've all learned and we've all come together and we're, um, becoming better runners together and everyone can give that little bit. So, yeah. Excellent. Thanks, James and Jeff, yourself. Um, yeah, probably the, the most important things of our group is just that accountability to each other. Um, it's an individual sport and everyone's on their own journey, but the only way we sort of um, make it work is if we come together and we're accountable. Um, and yeah, I guess above that is just the culture we create. Um, you know, it's a tough sport and, you know, there's four of us and we're all good athletes, but we might not get anything out of it the next year. So it's more, you know, being on that um, sort of journey together and learning and self-improvement that's going to transfer to all parts of life, not just, you know, not just running. And I think as an athlete, you have to be um, really, really self-aware um, of everything that's um, going on, um, you know, from psychology to physiology to, um, you know, physiotherapy, massage, like all the manager kind of stuff. You need to be across all of that because there's going to be times when you're sitting in a country in Europe where you've got no phone reception or like, you know, you're internationally roaming, you're catching trams to um, training and you've got to make calls on the spot. So, um, you know, unfortunately the sport and, you know, all the, inf the I guess the resources are pretty low. So um, we don't have the ability to travel with coaches and physios and all that sort of stuff. So you've got to really be pretty self um, yeah, self-efficient in that area. So um, you've got to kind of sometimes even make calls on your own when you can't have a coach. So you've sort of got to take a fair bit of ownership over what you're doing and, and I guess learning the whole time throughout what you're doing. Um, you can't just sort of, yeah, just, you know, just get the program and just do it no matter what. There's always going to, you're always going to have to be adapting on the, on the run. So 
That's probably my two Perfect. things. Thanks, Jeff. And uh, uh, Rich, last last little bit. Uh, what, what's your sort of thoughts on how how coaches athletes can work positively together? Um, well, I'll, I'll, first off, I'll go just slightly against what James said about being a simple sport. I think it's it's um, a fairly complicated middle distance, especially and long distance. They're, they're fairly complicated sports um, uh, or disciplines. Um, the reason I say that is. You've got to, when they're racing, you've got to be able to dissect the race. You've got to think about the race before you, you run the race. Um, you've got your strength and training. There's so many different disciplines within middle distance and long distance running. And uh, the psychology side of it, um, your, your mental approach, the way that you're going to approach a race. Uh, um, I'll be honest, sometimes you see an athlete and they're on the line they look like they don't want to be there. And then other times you'll see an athlete that's jumping out of his skin and probably um, a little bit overawed by the race or the start of the race. So, you know, but just to wrap it up, um, I think it's, um, it's a fairly involved sort of sport. Uh, a great sport. Um, I wouldn't change anything, I must admit. Uh, I don't think I've changed the way I've done things, um, and I've loved uh, I've loved every minute of it, and still do. Excellent. Yep, and we love having you involved too, Rich. All right, thanks, guys. Really appreciate your time today, and I uh, hope those who watched uh, learned quite a bit.